Hi, my name is Douglas Henderson. I am from the Engineering Phys Physics Department for the College of Engineering. I've been here for 18 years and my area of study is nuclear engineering. And my name is Mike Corradini. I'm also in Engineering Physics. I've been here for about 27 years and Doug and I are in the same program within Engineering Physics, Nuclear Engineering. And I guess we're here to talk about diversity and teamwork. That's right. Diversity so you go first. Right. Well, first of all, we should probably define what kind of teamwork we were referring to here. Is it research or is it sort of a, a school a class project that you're doing and so forth, and you have five individuals that are part of this uh, group or not? But one of the things we need to consider with that, if it's a larger group, then we will have a diversity of sort of individuals as part of this. We could have a very um, individual that's very sharp, very quick in thinking and so forth, uh, we could have individuals, for instance, we have one or two women on the, in the group as well as men on the group. Uh, we could also have diversity in terms of cultural diversity, international students uh, with uh, national students, and also diversity, sort of what we call um, minority students in the group as, as well, or other unrepresented students that are part of it and may only have one or two of those uh, in the classroom and may only be the only one in your group. So there's a large sort of variety of ways we can define diversity in terms of that uh, in teamwork or diversity of a group. That's a good definition. A good definition. Very so, good. All right, so what do you think about that? Um, I, I think Doug and I had talked ahead of time, and, and the one thing I wanted to emphasize to follow on what, what uh, he said is that in some sense it's also the setting in which you have it, which is if you were a faculty member with uh, postdoctoral student, doctoral students, uh, undergrads, whatever, it, it is a different sort of a team makeup and a team dynamic than if you were all peers in a classroom or even in a job setting. So the team and essentially the, the dynamic relative to where everybody sits in some sort of status or some sort of position relative to the others also affects the team. And the other thing that probably is more apparent to the students, which I'm assuming the students, are, uh, students will be listening to this, is that many times in school the team is all peers and there really is no um, supervisor, so to speak. The instructor might be considered the supervisor. Many times in team projects in school, there really is no direct um, um, what I'll call supervision or watching of the team. As the team is up, it's up to them to essentially set the pace, set the goals, develop the schedule, and essentially then also deal with the team dynamics, whether it be cultural uh, differences, gender differences, uh, ethnic differences. So it makes for a different uh, method in which the team has to function and actually has to perform. So. That's probably the other part of a team definition or considerations. That's right. And one thing to remember is that if you are working with the peers in the group, is that it's very important to have respect for all the members in particular on your team. There's, there can't be this uh, sort of attitude or one person have the attitude, I know all the answers, therefore I direct everything. That usually doesn't go over very well. Or for instance, if you may have a, a woman on you, she's maybe the only woman, uh, on your team, the same thing if the male students start to say, we can dominate, we know all the answers, that doesn't go over very well either. Or vice versa. Or, well, that can happen as well. Or Doug vice versa. dominates me all the time, but I have to set him straight, so. Yeah, 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 very sure. <laughs> Anyhow, but those are things to consider sort of when you're thinking about teamwork. And the main thing is to be cons considerate, be a team member, think about what you need to do, and also collaborate. It doesn't help, again, if, if one individual thinks they need to dominate or will dominate the whole scene and the whole effort in terms of the project. Yeah, I think, I think that's a very, I think Doug's points are very important. I, I'm gonna take now the opposite extreme to create some uh, discussion, hopefully, but the other thing, particularly when you're students in a team without direct supervision on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes the team members tend to fall into a, into, a, um, into a mode where you don't challenge the members because you don't wanna essentially offend them. So. It's probably very important, any sort of team dynamic, whether you have a supervision on a daily basis, weekly basis, whatever, or if you essentially um, are kind of on your own for 15 weeks of a semester, to almost start off with developing a schedule. Because then, in some sense, the expectations are kind of negotiated ahead of time. Everybody knows that this is the end game. The project had to be finished by such and such a time. We're gonna have to get the report done. We're gonna have to get our presentation done. You also have to think sometimes of a division of labor. That is, uh, he does all the uh, talk and I do all the calculations and he, he gets the good grade and I don't or whatever it is, right? <laughs> but, but in some sense, a division of labor, kind of a schedule so that before you get into it and some people might tend to dominate or others might tend to sit back and let things uh, kind of cook along, everybody has an expectation of what the timeline is, what people's general duties are, 
who's in charge of what so that that essentially creates a feeling that everybody kind of has developed the ownership and the complete schedule and dynamics of it, at least to begin with. And that probably gets you off to a good start. Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, it's also good to know perhaps about personalities, if you want to say that, and also the duty. Is someone strong in writing, is someone strong in computation, someone strong in some analytical kind of work, those kind of things, or computational work if that involves uh, writing a code or so forth. So it's nice to that, but the main thing is that there's a division of work. You don't want to get into a situation where one of the students feels like I'm doing all the work and therefore nobody else is doing any of the work in the, on the project or on the team. Yeah, so. I think that's, that's a good point. I guess uh, just to emphasize one thing that Doug has said, in, in some senses that um, when you're in a team environment, sometimes you get it's difficult to know what the strengths are. So one thing that has been done in the past, I've done it sometimes, I've seen uh, Doug doing it with, with, like, with classes where they might have team projects in class. It wouldn't hurt the team once formed or as they're deciding to who kind of links up with whom, like it's two, three, four, five individuals, to kind of give a little bit of a background of you know, where they come from so people can get a feeling for their cultural background, you know, where they're coming from. For example, I happen to know Doug and, and I know all the dirty little secrets, right? Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. if I didn't, I might start off the whole thing by asking him, you know, kind of where did you grow up? You know, uh, do you have brothers and sisters? Uh, um, you know, did you uh, come in from another planet, right? But, but things that essentially get, kind of breaks the ice, try to get people to understand where they're coming from. And in some sense, that gives you a hint to how might they might interact with people. And that also helps the other members to know, you know, what are the boundaries? Because sometimes people are very happy to be given short time tasks, you know, gee, weren't you supposed to do that this week? Others are much more happy to be given a relatively vague goal that they know they have to get this done, but they don't want to be pushed on a daily basis. And you kind of have to understand the personalities of the people involved so that the team functions on a positive basis. Uh, I guess the only thing that you don't want to do is, if you've ever seen The Apprentice, don't do it that way because that's about the only negative team dynamics I've seen given week after week. But Yes, no, I agree with that. Uh, schedule is very important. Knowing the duties of individuals is very, very important as well. And uh, overall goal, obviously, is that the team functions very well. You don't want to have a member holding back the team or anything like that. But to keep focused on the goal and which direction that you're going. I think that's uh, keep that objective in mind. Again, it's a little different also if you have a small project during the semester, maybe it's only a semester project that goes on for a few weeks Weeks versus a project perhaps where you're a larger team for at graduate level. At the graduate level, perhaps some of these, these, these dynamics extend beyond just one semester. They can extend on beyond two years, three years. So there is also very important to, to keep the focus there. Uh, obviously, in that situation where things extend beyond one semester, you have much more time to get sort of study the person. Maybe that's not, probably not the right word to do, but get to know the person better as well. And most likely, and I'm sure definite, that your advisor would be involved in this whole situation as well. And that it creates another slightly different dynamic in that situation. What do you think, Mike? No, I think, I, I think, in fact, Doug brought up something that's, I guess, good to again emphasize, which is the time scale of the project actually falls into how the team behaves. For example, if it's a short-term project, 15 weeks in a semester, then in some sense, all this analysis and all this thinking you have to do on a relatively short-term basis, and you might actually have to develop a very clear sense of, okay, in three weeks, you're supposed to do this calculation, so I hope to see it in three weeks. So there's no disagreement or miscommunication of to what's expected of your team members. So then when three weeks rolls around and there's no calculation or there's no uh, test or whatever, it, there's, there's no sort of vagaries that, gee, I thought you were going to do that. Weren't you going to do that or something like that? That cre can create actually more discord in a team than in right up front with the schedule, with duties, everybody kind of knows where they fit in. If it's long times, as Doug was saying, for example, if you're part of a, uh, in an industrial team where some of the calculations and the computations or the analysis or the testing is co quite complex and you have to go away by yourself or with another smaller group to, to get a piece of data, mm -hmm. now you can go on for months without necessarily communicating because you have to, because it's a complicated uh, task. And then you've got to fit, you know, get back together and do it. And in some sense, the shorter the timeline, the harder it is to uh, behave as a team effectively because that time schedule is sitting there kind of gnawing at you to do things. So as he said, develop the, the division of labor, get the schedule out there so there's no miscommunication. And then, even though it's a short time, it, it'll actually probably go quite uh, much 
go much better. Mm -hmm. So very good, very good. Well, anyhow, we just hope that um, you and your teamwork will uh, be able to coordinate things and collaborate and have a great time as you kind of do your work together. And I don't know, Mike, you have any finishing comments? Yeah, I don't want to be your team member anymore. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Give me a break. <laughs> so I hope this helps. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.